yo, 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 welcome to another episode of Horrible Decisions. I'm sorry, y'all. It's your girl, Mandy B, a.k.a. That Bitch, a.k.a. Pet the Stein, a.k.a. I'll fuck your mama and your daddy, a.k.a. Genuine is fine and y'all better stop playing with that man. He's fine. He fine. If he doesn't dance. I like the dancing. It's giving let's dance badly together. Well, my name is Wheezy. What the <laughs> fuck is Genuine doing on stage? He's doing everything that clearly made it to where this motherfucker got a hell of a lot of kids with a hell of a lot of baby mamas. He probably got good dick. Honestly, like big dick niggas, so like they always have like a little corny because God is fair. <laughs> so there's always something kind of wrong with them. And in Genuine's case, it's... Man, that nigga fine. He dances he like sing. you. That's probably why you But you, you know like what's you. crazy? And I tell everybody, hey, listen, baby, a bitch can't dance, but I can... Throw this ass back on some dick. That's all that matter. I can fuck. Like, I can't dance. Can't really grind. Can't really vibrate. But when a dick is inside well, me, I can do it. We can't see that online. It, we was, see... it was crazy, too. Is Trina actually said that. I could, like, or no, it wasn't even Trina. She said she could spin around with the, the dick, dick still inside. inside. But there's, like, someone else that says, but she can't do it on a dick. Uh, right. What about it? I can do a lot on a dick. I just can't do a lot. You, by we myself. know you can't fucking ride one. I mean, I just choose not Mandy, to. Mandy, you basically are now telling us all you can do is throw it back. And that's what the niggas like. <laughs> I got some ass. I got some ass back there. Uh, speaking of, I guess I wanted to start off with a little bit of catch up because uh, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of guests coming up. Mm -hmm. And so while you guys have been loving the solos, we have some really, really dope guests. You know what? Guess me. It means we're in a fight. <laughs> I mean, or it just means we both Honestly, really don't have a... a sexual life right now or dating life or niggas. And so let's talk about someone else's Honestly, life. Honestly, the guests that we're having lately, though, everyone's just kind of coming in town right now. It's just like a time where... I'm here for it. Sometimes there's weeks where it's like the guests are kind of whack. And then there's other times where it really... I would never Ever call a guest whack, guys? Ever? We got weak guests. I, I, that's why I just looked at them like weak. Fine. I mean, weren't given what's supposed to be gays. That, that we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. It's so crazy now because I want everybody. Speaking of that, I want Roland Ray and his bitch. I will oh roll my his ass off. God. Do you watch her? Okay. So okay, is this King of the Wheelchair? So I'm not even gonna lie to you. This may be a really toxic question to ask. Do you think Rolling Ray is a top or bottom? <laughs> and uh, what I, what could he be? I mean, I don't know if he is, I guess, bottoming. But I don't know how, what functionalities. Also, I just want to make a, a note. <laughs> we are not ableist hoes. As you know, we had yeah, that we're not, was, we're not, we're nah, not. I was about to roll that hoe out of here when she started talking about how I couldn't suck dick. <laughs> and we had a comment recently where someone said, I loved your blind guy episode. And, um, you know, both women that were in the well, wheelchair. Well, we've had two women in a wheelchair, not really a man. No, but we've also had um, Shorty that everyone loved, the white chick who was missing an arm. Daya. Yes. Not Daya. Daya. It was Daya. No, no, no. We're thinking D of Daya there. Her name was something else. D-A-Y-A. No, her, she had oh, no. her name. You know, we grew white women in together. But anyway. She was spicy. She was a top Now, Mindy, I tell why you. am I getting all the disabled people? Where are you at, bitch? You said you weren't an ableist. I, I said, don't know we, them no, we are. I'm saying you need to figure, you need I'm to go out. I'm bringing all the sex club Bitch, you people. need to go outside. I bring in the sex club people. I bring in some sex workers. I bring in the niggas that want to be pegged. I lean more towards the black sex lane. You bring in <laughs> the others. <laughs> Not the outcast. You bring in the others. Mandy, I can, like, I'm in the parking lot just waiting on the handicap spot. Like, you want to be on the show? It's, it's given. You, I remember, well, I, I, bro, you brought a cross dresser on that you came across on fucking uh, one of them dating apps. You're like, yo, swipe this nigga and said, let me swipe right and see if he wants to come on the pod. You literally, and white man, white. You you look for everyone. I just be like, where the niggas at? I mean, I guess that's true. I do like, I don't know. I just want some weird ass guests. I um, I was just thinking of something. Oh, if by the way, if you're listening to this, and yes, I am joking about disabilities, and I want to joke in your face. <laughs> uh, I would love to interview someone that um, maybe has cerebral palsy or just something that maybe is a hindrance during sex, and I'd love for you to bring awareness, talk about it on the, on the pod. Um, maybe someone with autism, I you think that'd be great. You know who I want to bring on, too? Who? Somebody that got that thing from, like, Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo. Tourette's? What, no, not the Tourette's. The bitch that just... Narcolepsy? Started fell asleep. She just fell asleep to where she had to have her hair tied to the thing on so the TV. So she wouldn't, like, choke in her food? I want to know if, like, 
what do what do you do to a male ego if he busting that ass and you just <sighs> I want somebody who just be falling asleep out of nowhere. That's who I want. Yeah, anyone with narcolepsy <laughs> is listening or has made it through this part of the podcast. <laughs> but but I really do want um what was I gonna say? Uh, fuck, what did I just say before that? Not narcolepsy. Oh, Tourette's. Sophia with an F. Y'all should check out her episode. She had a girl with Tourette's on the show, and it was recording at my studio, and one of the girls, Yomi, wrote me and was like, bro, this shit is real. Like, this is not a joke. This girl can't stop saying big black. Like, she can't say and stop saying Wait, dick. Wait, what did she say? It wasn't big black dick. Sorry. Big black dick? I was thinking about the girl from the dentist. You remember? It was like, I want a BBC. On anesthesia? Um, no. People, whenever they have outbursts on medication, love talking about big black cocks. Because it's, it's good. And we all think about it often. We do. But yeah, if you got Tourette's, hit me up. Um, unless speaking, you... of, speaking of big black dick, have you like... Fuck that guy again? Any... So I know the last time I came in here, <laughs> I was without, but now I'm within. And I actually fucked the nigga that kissed a bitch um, at the box. So I did talk about it on Patreon. It was amazing. It was really good. We fucked for two and a half hours. I was in pain. Um, he and I are going to be having sex after Envision Fest. I think I'm, oh, I'm taking him to Company XX, whatever okay. that number is. Okay. Okay. So. Fancy. Excited Fancy. about fucking him again. Y'all know I love a little artist, nigga. Um, and then, so a few weeks ago, I was in New York for a Netflix premiere. Y'all, I'm sure everybody's seen it now. You probably haven't seen it yet. Intergalactic by Kid Cudi. Holy shit. That was one of the best things I've seen. It's an animation. Kenya produced it, which was why I came here. Oh, my God. It's so good, Mandy. You, if no one's ever done mushrooms, watch it and you'll know what it feels like. It was phenomenal. So at the party, I shouldn't have mixed business with pleasure. Uh-oh. I mean, I guess it wasn't business. I don't work with him. He was just there. But um, there was a guy that I've seen on some Zoom calls for work, and he was very cute in the flesh. And... Um, you know, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, you were out of the same city, but we're in L.A., but now we're in New York. And then, who knows, a night at last lap turned into me basically telling him I haven't had sex in a while. And he said, uh, well, damn, how long has this been? I was like, like 70 days, probably. I don't know. Like, I was just naming some shit off. And he was like, well, if you want to talk about day 71 and spoon at my hotel. And I was like, nah, I'm good. So I was out. Again, with my homegirl, I'm looking at Gabby, and I'm like, I think I'm going to go spoon with him. Like, I think I'm going to do it. She's like, but it's like 4 o'clock in the morning, bro. I'm like, I think that's just what I want to do, you though. You be loving utensils. <laughs> Not you spooning. You be scissoring. You be doing so, all the little shit. I go to his hotel, and I literally showed up. And I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just showing up here for the bath products because this particular hotel has a great line of shit. And he was like, that's cool. I'm a nigga, too. So whatever. He had a robe waiting for me. And I was like, I'm really, like, actually not ready for sex. And he was like, oh, if I wanted to have sex tonight, I wouldn't have told you that. I would have got some pussy. So I was like, okay, which is facts. Like, he can fuck whoever right. he wants. So we were in the bed talking for, like, three hours, cuddling. I really wanted to feel if it was big. But I thought if I felt it, then I was going to fuck it. Yep. So I held on. That's how I met Soulmate. Like, I wasn't going to fuck him. I told him we wasn't fucking. And then it was big. I said, damn, damn. damn. Did that with uh, Black Jesus, too. Once Damn. you know it's big, Once you, you got to put it in you your got, mouth. You have to. Like, ladies, PSA, if you don't want to fuck a guy, and, and this is the first time of you guys meeting, this is the first time y'all hanging out, don't even, don't even play pockets. Don't rub the dick. Don't try to see if it's big or not. Just save that for another time. Because once you see, God damn it, that thing throbbing is big. I'm telling you. Ugh. You can't. So I made sure to like not go around it. So then we were in the bed for another like three hours in the morning just talking shit and, you know, how he got put on to work and the same. And we're like. You ain't even try to feel for the morning wood? No. However, and we were in the bed the whole time. He didn't even stand up. I was like, fuck. I was in panties, he was in his boxers, and he kept telling me I was soft and I wanted to just grab it. But if I grabbed it, I knew I was going to fucking put it in my mouth. So I didn't. But literally, I'm leaving, and I'm like, I'm leaving at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, bro. And I'm like, I've never cuddled with someone and not kissed them. And he was like, yeah. And then he's looking at me, and I'm like. Wait, y'all didn't kiss all night? No. So I'm like, so we just do it now. So y'all spooned, but there was no intimate, like, y'all so didn't then, kiss. No, we were just talking too long. So then he looked at me, and he's like. 
okay. And I'm like, should we do it now? And then he started coming closer to me. I'm like, no, now it's not, now it's awkward. So then we like tried to do it again. And he was a really good kisser. And I realized it was God. Cause bitch, if I would have kissed that nigga last what night. What you mean it was God? Can you not bring God into this? I really didn't want to have sex with someone that was kind of work adjacent. And again, I don't work with him, right? Like, it's just like, it is kind of the same world, like for real. So I was like, this might be too close to home. But once I kissed that nigga, I ain't going to lie. I've been thinking about him the whole time. And he's rich, but not like rich enough to be in the public eye rich, just low key rich, which is even better. Because now bitches might look at you and be like, oh, he has on a nice watch and clothes, but like maybe he's nobody. And then all the money is for me. So you, <laughs> so he's now an option. And then you still have the box guy. So now you have two guys that you're kind of. I do. And a girl. And a girl. You remember the girl that grabbed me up at that party in Fashion Potty? Week? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't say that. Okay, and Potty? Um, her, yeah. Interesting. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. And speaking of parties, as I go home this weekend to L.A., there is a party that is super popping that I really want to go to, and I found out Old Bay will be there. How? Do, wait, 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 wait. How the fuck you know this nigga gonna be there if you blocked him, you don't talk to him, you he dead to you, you don't want nothing to do with him. How do you know he's gonna be at a party next week? Because one of his boys told me, hey, sending you this link to RSVP, would love to see you there. Just want you to know, boom, boom, we're gonna be there. And I said, I won't be RSVP. I said, well, I probably won't be attending. But then I got on the scale this morning and I saw it was six pounds down and my face is just giving cute again. <laughs> And I got a new little piercing, and now I got I had sex with someone else. So I'm kind of feeling better. <laughs> so now you're gonna go? Do you not think that that's gonna bring you into any type of like depression or anything? Well, I told him that I I didn't think I was gonna go, and he goes, "Don't worry, the party's two floors." I said, "Nigga, I live in a city with nine million people, and I'll be running into and be that nigga. running into people." So I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I really have been feeling great, and so I'm worried that if I see him, what if I'm drunk? What if I spit on him? What if I throw a water bottle like I wanted to? Right. Who knows what'll happen? Right. I mean, well, I'm in a place where I realize I've been looking for a doppelganger of my ex. Black Jesus and I are just friends. Cause, Why? Because he got a lot going on and we just... What do you do? No, we're just also like, we don't have the sexual compatibility. Like, he doesn't have the sex drive as I do, but he want to hang out. And I'd be like, nigga, do you think I just want to watch TV with you? What? No, I don't. I want to do more. Yeah. So like... But from a, like, creative standpoint, conversation, us hanging, he's dope as shit. Girl, pass him on. Recycle oh, no. that nigga. Oh, no. Because you're going to get that dick again. Eventually. See? Eventually. That's how I knew you was Eventually. So, here's like, the, the nigga done met the whole goddamn staff. He be pulling up. Like, So that's the cool. thing, though. You not friends with him. We are friends. But he's one of those friends, I'll be honest with you. He's one of those friends that... On the right night, yeah, we'll fuck. <laughs> and so he's one of those friends that if I get into a relationship, I would probably have to remove myself from him. Because even like, uh, we literally went out to dinner the other night and it was because he brought like a client to the studio. So he's even like, love what you have. Like I have this person that wants to do something. So brought his friend by the studio. We all went to eat after. And literally in front, I was like, yo, what's crazy is like, Y'all know I don't be into the stars and moons, but in terms of like manifesting and talking about what I want, oh, um, yeah, we had the door open, y'all. Sorry, this fly going around. But literally told him to his face in front of his homeboy, I said, yo, what's crazy is, nigga, I manifested you. And I told him that to his face. I said, you the exact nigga I said I wanted. I said I wanted a good looking nigga, big old dick, a lot of money, cool, creative. But you got shit going on, you come with baggage, and your sex drive isn't what I need it to be. Didn't say the sex drive part in front of his friend, but I said, you're emotionally just not available right now. And so I was just like, mm. damn. I realized how I have to be so much more precise with the things I want, because literally I said, nigga, you are exactly what I said I wanted. Well, you, you mentioned doppelganger for your ex, and it's interesting because I, there's yes. someone I dated in the past that I was talking to like that Reiki healer lady about, and let's just say his name's Mark. I don't know. She was like, you need to stop thinking so much about having a man like Mark and start saying things like Mark or better, right? Mm. Like if maybe he'll come back and it'll be him or better. She's like, he's not the best person you've ever dated. Like you will find someone that's better than that. And the world is just showing you that you're that much closer, right? Your ex had many flaws. You've talked right. about them, right? But, and so do I though. But, but I realized that. 
And that's like but over over the hold last. Hold on, we're not talking about your flaws. We're but, not talking about anything that's should, wrong with you. But I should acknowledge that. But we're not acknowledging. I'm not that. perfect. He's not perfect. But we're not talking. But about he's you. exactly what I wanted. You don't need to say somebody. He's exactly what I wanted. Still to this day. I think that's a really actually shitty thing to do when someone's talking about things that you deserve better. Like you shouldn't be like, yeah, he did this to me, but I'm also nah, bro. I. And maybe that's something that I have to bring up in therapy, but to me... Bitch, you need to the, therapize that. Well, the fact that I'm looking for a doppelganger, to me, I... You're allowed to have something well, better. But I'm realistic in knowing that not anyone is perfect, and in the ways that he wasn't perfect, it was something I was willing to... I, I had patience with. And, I mean, I recently just talked about this on my other podcast, too, but, like, I, I made a post on my Instagram talking about, like, what's the difference from dating in your 20s to dating in your 30s? And it was the conversation regarding the difference in patience and tolerance. There's still things I won't tolerate, but I was patient in him understanding me because I'm different than than who he's dated in his past. And I also know I'm a lot. I travel a lot. I'm the life of the party. I'm loud. Like, when we've hung out, he knows I have a lot of male friends. So I'm introducing him to male friends. Men, like, like even when I was on, on you know, Joe Budden Network and... Charlemagne's calling me. Joe is FaceTiming me. I'm friends with NBA niggas, just friends. And you know the ones I'm just friends with. Like, for, for anybody, there's a lot that I understand that a man has to kind of deal with and be okay with checking his ego. And I think that that's the problem. I realize how much, like, I have to deal with being coddling to almost men being jealous or insecurity. And it has more to do with them than me. But I'm, I understand that no man is going to come perfect for me. But in, in the ways that he made me happy, when I say I want a doppelganger, that man made me so fucking happy. And I seek that again. And so maybe I do need to take a longer break, which is why I'm cool with Black Jesus not being what I need right now. And I'm just cool with taking more of a break. Taking more of a break from that, but also I think, and we'll get into it for the horrible decision, and where I used to be able to come and be like, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, I got a roster. That shit is like not at all something I'm able to juggle right now that I'm able to balance. And I don't want multiple dicks right now. I do like one, but I don't also want a relationship. So it's like, I don't know. I, I understand and I appreciate what you just said in me deserving more, but also... He's so, he's leaps and bounds beyond what I have gotten before. I think it's more so just saying things like, if you're talking about something you want, you don't need to say, well, yeah, I could have better, but I'm also, I don't know. I, I, you don't, you would never do that when talking about things you want in success. So why do you do it when it comes to, you know what I mean? Well, because it's, it's to me, it's actually the same in success. I can say that I want something, and in terms of No, you even, can, Mandy, that's well, like saying... You just opened a podcast studio. Did you say, oh, I'm going to open a podcast studio, but it's not like my podcast is that big or this, this, that. So maybe I shouldn't expect my studio to be that great either. Well, no, it, but I don't look at it in terms of greatness, but I look at it in terms of, okay, say I want to start a new business. I know what I want out of it, but I also am not going into it thinking that there won't be leaps and hurdles, that everything will happen how I want it to be. Like I have a team that's still growing. Some people aren't learning as quickly as I would want them to learn. Now, I could sit here and say I wanted this to be perfect. The idea of it going into being perfect isn't the case. I have a whole nother podcast. Now, based off of our podcast for the last six years, did I go in wanting it to be a certain way? Absolutely. Is it everything I imagined? Not necessarily. And so to me, knowing, yes, I may want better in another partner, I also am very, very um, sure of the things that he did bring to me, and also understanding even if someone else brings me those exact things, that person may not still be perfect in other ways. Right. No one's going to be perfect. No, no one's going to be exactly perfect, but there who is, I want them there to be. There are people in the world that you could date that would be better than him, and the more you put him on a pedestal, the more you will lower, like, the more you won't be happy, because comparison is truly the thief That's of possible. joy. That's possible, for sure. You know, like, for sure. when you compare yourself to others, and for anyone listening, like, whether it's work or a partner or like maybe you're watching a friend that has something you don't truly like comparing yourself to that will really fuck your shit up like i have done it so many times in my life whether it be my body whether it be my job whether it be my salary 
I'll compare shit. And I'm like, nigga, there's someone that would die to have the things that I do. So we have to stop comparing in terms of something we had in the past. You need to start being reflective of, and this was something my girl Emily told me actually that I really liked. She's like, when you're manifesting, stop thinking of the past and think of future you. Think of the future shit you will have. Yeah. Because it's true. Like a lot of times I will think about things I've seen before. Like think of future shit that you will have. Don't necessarily think of things that you had before that you'll say you want again. Because that's really when we fuck ourselves up. And I know like a lot of times, you know, if anyone's listening for a long time, I get super stressy and depressy. But these are a lot of things I've written down to like keep my shit okay. And yeah, this week I am okay. You know, like mental health's a motherfucker. But I think it's because... Those little moments of my life, the little pocket of me having sex with someone new or being able to cuddle with a man may not end up with these niggas, but also it just feels like, okay, yeah, it can happen. There's someone else. I mean, I am getting closer to that thing. And I think that's what our partners are sometimes. They're reminders of the things we could have. It's just showing us we're getting closer. You know, even too with work, when you have a next step in your career with something, it just shows you that much closer you are to the next greatest thing. Like the thing that we're working on now, I went to Charlemagne's show yesterday. And um, by the way, anyone who wants to go see a live taping of a show, I, I think you just go on a yeah. site, you sign yourself up, please and go. He, he wants an audience. Yeah, so yeah. many of our, our fans were there. And like, it's really cool to watch a live taping. Um, I want to go see Maury while he's still around. Is he still Is around? Is he still doing it? I, wanna I, see, I thought he ended that. I want to see the Jerry Judd show. Some. I think Maury done. Oh, Maury ended, but Jerry's got the court show. Not Jerry Springer. Yes. Jerry Springer got a court show? He's a judge. Now, I want to go to Steve Harvey court show. Oh, I know I that shit. I good. know he be coming to them like but with we, his lips and all. Like, so but y'all got to go because it's really cool. You get to sit in the audience. You'll see whatever big guests they have. But um, I signed up to go because I was in New York. And literally, Kenya was the guest that week and didn't expect that, right? Um, I'm so mad I ain't go when fucking Ray J was the guest. Oh, I'm my so God. motherfucking mad. Even though Charlamagne not slick, he wrote the caption where he said there was so much they couldn't talk about, and I ended up like running into people that work on the show at the Revolt Summit, and they cut it out. And they was like, "Man, it was so much shit we couldn't even talk about because the motherfucking Kardashians really got power, bitch. Them, them white girls got power, bitch. Yeah, hi, love you. Hey, hey. I'm scared. <laughs> um, well, I say that to say. When I was walking out, um, a fan of Horrible Decisions said, like, yo, like, do you ever look back and think how crazy it is that, like, you were just doing Brilliant Idiots? I found you on Brilliant Idiots. And I was like, sometimes I, I look back and think of that, yeah. And, and there's a lot of times where I don't realize what my life is. And she said, actually, we should definitely insert a bleep here. But she goes, can you imagine if, like, you and Mandy made a book? Like, imagine when that happens. That would be, like, the craziest thing, right? And I'm looking at this bitch like, holy shit, we are doing that shit. Yeah. And it's almost like each thing in your life, and I say this because I'm talking about partnership too, you can't believe you wasn't you were there five years ago. Like, it feels like it was so far away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Would, your, would you five years ago believe that you were here today? And I really am trying to believe. You saw the horrible decision, baby. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. No. Let's, let's, I, I want to believe that I'm saying that we'll be like that with partnership. Like, I would love to be sitting with you talking about how disgusting it was when my placenta came out because I had a baby. Like, Lord, I can't imagine gross. talking about that shit. Or you saying that, that shit. you've got That's a man nasty. and y'all have your... Uh, what did you say? You don't want to live together, but you kind of want to live together. No, 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 no. You got your two Maybe apartments he, close by, he, or he in the he in the outhouse. I would love for back, that to happen. Back in the backyard. And I would be like, yo, of my multi million dollar. We mansion. were on episode two eighty nine talking about da, 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 da. like that shit's gonna happen. All right. Well, I wanted to get into our vanilla shit because I wanted to make this a little funny here. Cause bitch, you thought. Um. So the vanilla shit. If you guys are tuning in and not familiar with what vanilla shit is, it is. Sex in the news, um, or somewhat uh, aligned with that. Um, And I want to bring up the fact that PETA has called for women to go on a sex strike against men who eat meat. PETA, PETA's German division claims devouring sausages and schnitzels is a symptom of toxic masculinity that is killing the planet. The nonprofit organization has urged women to go on a strike, sex strike to be exact, 
to quote unquote save the world. During an episode of Sky News Australia's Newsday, available to stream on Flash, Laura Wyman Jones, marketing manager of PETA Australia, discussed the ban. The PETA Australia representative said its organization's statement was designed to be a conversation starter before adding, we really don't care about your sex lives. Of course, though, they care about the world. What we do care about is the planet and the animals we share it with, and those animals are dying by the billions in the crudest ways imaginable for burgers and sandwich filling. Now, I've come on this podcast quite a bit, and I realized only because the way I just tore down some motherfucking smothered chicken with white rice, cabbage, and cornbread, baby, you're not getting- Who taught you how to cook? Bitch, TikTok now, I ain't gonna hold you. But my mom, um, my mom, though she is white, um, learned how to cook from my Jamaican ass daddy and all of my black family, and my mom still to this day makes the very best oxtail I've ever had in my life. Um, and my mom is like a soul food cooker. She's she's a white woman, but she's a southern white woman who dated nothing but black men, so she, she knows seasonings, right? And so, <laughs> like, what's crazy is when I got to actually cooking, my mom, like, I used to ask my mom about her recipes, like, what you be putting in this? Like, her collard greens, slap. And it's been harder. So, southern food. I well, love like, southern food. Southern homemade, ho- southern cook. Period. I actually. And that's me. Period. Y'all gonna be mad. We know you make avocado toast. No, no, no. no. I was oh. gonna say, I put <laughs> southern cooking over island cooking for one main reason. Okay. Bitch, I like shit that's fried. Okay. Okay. And this was my first time even, like, and, you gotta make the skin crispy. And a lot of people don't know how to do food. that shit. I hate fried food. I so I don't really cook fried food, my but... God, put it in my veins! What's crazy is, I also realized, and if y'all go back in the episodes, I dated somebody, I think I called him, was it vegan? Was it vegan bae? Did I have a vegan bae? The nigga that took me to a vegan restaurant on day one, and I was just like, ooh, not you ordering nothing but sides. Because we ended up going to Amy <laughs> Ruth's. And bitch, I had the, like, I like meat. Now I like dick, but I like meat. Me too. I like oxtail. I like meat. These Muslim I like me controversial up, but I like, meat, nigga. But I, I had rabbit. What's controversial meat? Like, I had rabbit at Lucienne the other day. TV people don't like. I like duck. I like fucking octopus, ho. I and like crocodile, alligator. I, bro, I like foie gras, okay? What is that? When they blow. I just, it's foie gras. Fuck. So basically, it's, like it's, it's the goose mousse, liver. Right? Goose liver. A liver. But you, they fatten it up. And but also, like... y'all know I like the food that apparently was just for the slaves, but I still fuck with. Give me a motherfucking fried chicken gizzard with some hot sauce. Because oh. it's fried. I'll take it boiled, too. Are you kidding me? I love a boiled chicken gizzard. <laughs> with some with some tomato stew? Oh, bitch. Bitch, you got me fucked up. All I know is y'all got me fucked up thinking I'm finna go on a sex strike. Cause a nigga eat meat. Nigga, order the tomahawk and let me know you got that cash. That Peter shit was. Cor- I'm gonna be honest. Peter corny. Period. Not Peter corny. They oh, are. Oh, we're gonna. Are we gonna get canceled for that? I'm not getting canceled, bitch. Is Peter a black owned organization? I don't know, but the way I'm about to bust these furs out, baby, it's 60 degrees. We getting cold, and I got the money to buy the real I, fur I'm this just time. One of those people where I'm like, go all in, my nigga. Y'all be getting mad at all these people with the fur. Meanwhile, bitch. We're all rocking these designer bags. A lot of their CEO are, and what are those made of? Love, which Thank is giving you. cow ass. Mm. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, we walking around with cow ass like a motherfucker. Um, I did want to get into instead of a hors d'oeuvre this Damn, week. Damn, I, I wore that shirt this morning. Did you? Yeah. Oh. You know, free shirts. Mm. It's giving high and low. It's giving free screening T-shirt with the Prada boots. Um, I love high low. Yeah, it's bitch. I, I wore it. a fucking Margiela top and some Amazon heels to that premiere party, honey. Not the Amazon heels. Oh, girl, it was zebra. I was fly, bitch. Oh, let me tell you what happened to me, bitch, because this shit was embarrassing. Not embarrassing. So, I, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, poised because I'm partying with my boss, right? And I am looking at Kid Cudi, and I'm like, am I gonna talk? Oh my god, I don't know what to say, but I'm so excited. What do I do? And um, I'm talking to the producers for Intergalactic, and my homegirl looks at me, and her eyes look dilated. Like, she has this look like, oh, my God. And I was like, oh, shit. Old Bay must be behind me. Like, why else would you look like you're freaking out? Like, what's going on behind me? Goody. No. Who? She goes, and this is why I said I was looking real good. I'm going to post a picture so y'all can see it. She goes, 
Your ponytail's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you lying. Wait, your ponytail fell out? Wait, 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 wait. Mandy, it was a long braided ponytail down to my knees. And the shit fell out. <laughs> and Bitch, so you lying. Oh, when I did tell you, you not bobby pin and secure that bitch. When I tell you I did a curtsy like this, let me show you how I did it. This is how I bitch, it. your whole ponytail was on the floor. But this is how black women come together. Ponytail was on the floor, but people didn't notice, right? Because they're just looking at me in my face, and I just kind of lean down. Bitch, Weezy, I... your ponytail. My was... ponytail was on the floor. Bitch, a braided ponytail. Girl, Gabby came over to me, and she goes, <laughs> trying to be quiet, but she's not quiet. Because she's also in shock that my ponytail's on the floor at this fucking Netflix premiere party where niggas is in the room with fucking Oscars and Emmys. And she goes, I have bobby pins in my back. But she's trying to Shout like. Shout out to her. Bitch. Shout out to came her. Came over. So I first take the ponytail and I just start wrapping it over the bun because I didn't want to look like I had a little nub on my head. And so then she gets rubber band after rubber band. And bitch, weren't people coming up to me talking about how they love the braided bun look? <laughs> Not a braided bun look. Oh my God. So anyway, that's why I have braids again right now. Was getting my hair done right before horrible, and I will never wear something that can slide off to a premiere again. Oh my good god! Which is crazy because when we fought, bitch, you had the drawstring ponytail, and that thing but was going the around thing, the club. Like, that thing was bouncing around the club. But girl, you ain't win. Bullshit. And you wouldn't win today, ho. Bullshit. Huh? You wouldn't, bitch. I won. Didn't I win absolutely then, won. and wouldn't win again. I would win if you think if you would. If we fought, bitch, you got me all the way fucked up. I won. Then I really and I would don't. win today. Mandy. I'll bust ass on anybody, bro. And it's, you I, didn't bust ass at the motherfucking bro, I, improv. You were talking about how we got security. Da, da, da. I think you've lost your floor. Improv because it's no, giving I'll corporate. I'll fight you, but I'm not fighting for you. I will too. Since you got me fucked up if you think we both going to get sued. You could get all of your money Girl, spent in a lawsuit. I but baby, I wasn't going to make this a horrible decision thing. I had to make the best it. decision for the, for the fucking business, and it was to not let, allow us to go bankrupt. If you wanted to go bankrupt because you wanted to jump in and fight Poe's, that's on you. Bitch, we can get sued and lose money now. For a no. mother? That's your mama, and I love her to death. I would have fought for your mama too, but, but it's I, cool. But it was a word, and you decided to fight for a word. I would fight for a lot of words, ho. And I appreciate you, you for that. You telling me there's not and a there's word somebody decision. could call you down the street that wouldn't make you beat their ass? Now, down the street where nobody is, outside of cameras, a venue where we didn't pay insurance yeah. for, we was at work, bitch. No, there's been a lot of fucking coworkers where, bitch, I wanted to slap five off that hoe. And I ain't fighter because, bitch, my job, my career, being sued. And now we make money, nigga. See what Were the fuck we doing? Were you not Will Smith's side? Excuse me? If... Chris Rock decided to sue him the same way August Alsina is probably going to sue Tory Lanez. I'm on the side of August Alsina. If Chris Rock sued Will Smith, I'm on the side of that. Some asks I'm are sorry. worth the money. That's fine. You and don't believe that? Like, I'm going to be real with you. There's a bitch in my hair right now. It's all I can't stand. Okay. And I be thinking about it all the time. And I'm like, how much would I pay to beat her ass? And I'll let you know right now, there ain't one person in life that will make me go back to the livelihood that I've had in my teens or 20s. Oh, no, Cardi B got out. I'll get of, out. Off of that type of decision. So, nah, sorry, not going to happen. The municipality of New York City, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that court don't really know me. Orlando does. But I just feel like they're going to put me in GP and I'm going to get out. You got me fucked up. I wasn't going to fight. I wasn't going to sit here and, and but, get but us But you know soon. what? I am glad that we've both been to jail now. It's fun, right? It's like you go in. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't, actually. I hated it. It's it, like love after lockup. Nope, nope. I'll never go to jail again. Uh, I will say shout out to... Uh, don't don't never say never, bitch. Well, I'm just going to shout out to the uh, Queens division that I was locked up in because uh, the lieutenant there was really, really fucking nice. You um, stayed talking about this fucking... Because he was nice. Nigga gave me his phone. I was able to call niggas. Like, he was like, she looked normal. I was normal. It's not giving meth. I was normal. You know, it's crazy, too, because they lock up motherfuckers. I heard that's the only reason mushrooms is legal now is because, like, it spends so much money to put people... They, they spend so much to put people in jail. So I think when people come in and they're not cracked out, they're like, oh, all right, we'll but help But didn't you, you spend the night or a weekend? I only spent seven hours. So you're more of a, oh, no. uh, you're more of a felon than I am. That's why I ain't scared to go back. Now that I've already, like, for beating ass... I ain't gonna hold you. I would've turned into a hope. Spunt the night? Nope. Nope, I wasn't ready. I said, get me out of here. So here's the thing. I knew I was going to get out, right? It's not like I killed somebody. But you somebody. spent the weekend. But this is what I'm saying. Like, I got, Mandy, when I tell you I slept so hard. The ghetto. <laughs> not, you slept hard on concrete? 
There's a sidewalk the bed, right outside. Because there was nothing there else was to do. There's a sidewalk right outside. I knew outside. I didn't even need to socialize, so I just slept the whole time because I was like, fuck it, bro. I'm getting out on Monday. Well, Actually, Monday I couldn't get out because it was it Martin was a, Luther it was King Martin Luther, It was a weekend. But I knew I was going to get out anyway, so I just caught up on mad sleep. You Plus, I was on the though? Molly the night before, so I really needed that sleep. What's crazy, though, <laughs> is I would never do that, but also now you're like super, super gay. You're more gay than I think you used to be. So you might actually like jail because you just be in there like scissoring bitches. You know what's really annoying about you saying how <laughs> gay I am? I looked, what? I looked so cute at this party, right? And, and they were like, let's go! There was mad niggas there. <laughs> and so Kenya's talking to this dude, and I leaned over and I'm like, who is that? And he looks at me and he goes, aren't you gay? <laughs> <laughs> who was it? I don't know, some fucking nigga that was That you were supposed to know? No, but he was just fine. But, but if he... you like niggas, you should have known who he was? No, I think I, I, I just wanted to run down on this nigga. You know what I'm saying? But like, at the same time, I was like, I want to be professional. But also, I be trying... Mandy, let me tell you how I am How you want to be professional when you out here uh, because spooning I... niggas that you meet at work events? Because it wasn't like I worked with him. It was just Adjacently. A he worked with somebody I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I'm saying, I thought, I, th my excuse at any point in time when I want to meet a nigga at a work event is, hey, I'm Weezy. I work with Kenya directly. I'm his head of audio. I'd love to talk to you about blah, blah, over Zoom or my bed. I don't know. Oh, nah, bitch. You better sit here and act like you got a corporate credit card and say, over dinner, on me. On oh, business. I got a corporate credit oh, card, yeah. bitch. What? Oh, that'd be my Once shit. Once I found out I was able to do that I shit. I don't want to talk to nobody on Zoom, nigga. Let's go out to eat, and I'll show you how I eat. Well, weird meats. I, my new conquest. So, you know I want Trevante Rhodes, and every time- You know he's only 5'4". No, he's not. Trevante is not that tall. That's a short nigga. Don't ruin this. I will look it up for you. I'm I think we five, talked six, about this. Nope. Five, no, he was 5'11". He is not. No, Mandy. I've seen him in person. Well, how tall is Skepta? Because I want to fuck him too. It's giving uh, NBA height. Hold on. No, nah, they lied. They said six foot, so he's maybe six eight. No, no, no. I mean, that's five, it. Eight. That's it. He's good. No, he's, he's good. Not. He's good. He's, not. he's six he's foot. Not. He's six. He's foot. not. He's six. He's not. <laughs> when I suck his dick, you are going to be so mad about it. Well, hopefully his dick is a kickstand and makes him taller than when he stands up. He's six feet tall. He's giving Big Sean. <laughs> Which is a little Sean. <laughs> it's a lie. Big Sean's dick is huge, though. So that's why I said, hopefully, Trevante is the same with a whole kickstand that makes him taller. I just want him to put on the moonlight. But tea. also, technically, maybe y'all are the same height laying down, you know? And it works out for you. Um, I wanted to get into our I think the nigga, like, the nigga I cuddled it with 5'11". And I remember saying to him... I love that you're going shorter and shorter. That I thought he was tall. And he was like, nah, a lot of people think that. And then I realized... I don't want to say what he was wearing. But anyway, the nigga, you know when niggas wear Tim's and they look taller? Yeah, that's why you got to be careful in New York, y'all. Hey, fall is approaching us. He don't get I got tricked. tricked. Don't get tricked into these niggas with the Tim's. It's given three inches. Did you know Prince is... was 5'3"? Prince was also a homophobe that was gayer than gay. So I'm not shocked by anything that I see about Prince now and RIP to that man. But... The way I didn't realize how homophobic he was. What did you realize? What do you, what do you mean? Like, you I've learn? just read a lot of things about, like, just how he was super adamant that he wasn't, but certain things that he said regarding the LGBTQ community was just not nice. But also, nigga, you wore makeup, purses, and everything that also aligned. I'll, I'm at, well, maybe we'll do this on Patreon. I'll go through, like, the, the, the people that say they was one way. Well, and really we should do wasn't. a Patreon on homophobic celebrities. Well, let's do it. Let's do it, because he was one. Um, I did want to get though into RIP. Uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Got to be respectful, bitch. I be trying not to talk about the people that we done lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stop joking. We be talking about Kevin Samuels. I mean, RIP to that man. Well, let, well you uh, know what? He's looking up at us. You right know, now. he's looking down on us, bitch. No, he's not. Oh, you think he's in hell? The way he dressed was nice. I think God would have been like, bring your cool dressed ass up here. Because okay. it's just going to burn and have holes in hell. All right. Well. All right. His actual, his clothes would be giving uh, Yeezy. You know, Yeezy like just putting holes and making you look homeless. So in hell, they dress like Kanye. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Anyway, That's why he's practicing being hot. It is. Who? wait, what? Because he, you see. He's, he's practicing being what? Uh, dressing hot and warm because he said that he don't give a fuck what the temperature is. Yeah, he's, he, he's going to hell. Um, Why is Kanye going to hell? Because he's going to hell. No, bro. <laughs> Kanye. Where do you think he's going to heaven? Yeah. Hell. 
I think Kanye is definitely. I going would to love have... for you to ask his good music artists where where they think he's going. Wait. He has bad deals, bitch. Wait, this is not that. Let's get into our horrible decision. Um, we are going to do a look back. Look back at it. Look back at it. Oh, I God. look back at it. Hey. So we're gonna look back at again, y'all. We have reached. Oh my goodness. We're heading into, I believe, year seven. We've done six years though. Um, we're jamming out here on the black effect, but if you guys we're not familiar. Year one, we were independent. By year two, uh, we had the backing of Charlemagne and the Loudspeaker Network. Um, we put ourselves on tour. And it's crazy because someone just recently wrote on Twitter. That's where this topic came from. Damn, yo. Shorter really came far from accounting. I used to listen and, you know, she was accounting. So I was like, you know what? What's crazy about that is Weezy and I have sat on the pod. And there's been things that we both shot at each other without realizing that, well, we've both also grown. We've become differently. We've had mm -hmm. di different relationships. So I wanted, I, I broke this down into four different things. But yes, by, by the way, shout out to Black Effect. We just got a fucking raise. Yes. And God damn it, am R I happy. R round of applause. I don't know. Dwayne, go ahead and insert the round of applause here. I um, am I'm down so with a raise. I'm always cool with a raise. Happy Thank you. Thank you, Black My Effect. Shout out Black God. Effect. Shout out Charlotte Magne. Because I just um, bought a new car and I cannot wait. <laughs> To no, get that money back in my account. But also, um, if you guys didn't see the clip a couple weeks ago, also, I mean, people ask, you know, like, maybe if we went elsewhere, if, I mean, other people have wanted us, but uh, Charlemagne has been someone who has championed us for where he sees our value, where he sees we can be, and... We recently even got mentioned. We were on it, but not really. No, we, we were on, on Jimmy we, Kimmel. We were on Jimmy Kimmel. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Charlamagne texted me that shit. He said, click it three minutes. And uh, the second I heard him go, you're really busy. You have a podcast network. I said, no way he's going to say horrible decisions. And he said horrible decisions. And I think, you know, I've, I've definitely had comments on my page or whatever where, like, people are like, ah, you, you be sucking his dick. You love him so much. And, you know... There's a lot to be said about somebody who is that magnitude of famous and don't forget you. Yeah. You know, any encounter I'm sure people have ever gotten to have with Charlemagne, like you see how normal this person is and how kind they are. But also he is a true testament of someone that puts people on. Like yeah. going to his show yesterday, I'm watching Ismail, who, uh, you know, is a photographer. Shout out to Calligraphist. And Nyla Simone, who shout out to her, you know, BET nominator for the Hip Hop Awards. And seeing all these women that have worked with him in the past, a lot of black women on the, his show. Down, shout out to Nicole. Down to the COVID testers, right? Yeah. And it's a lot of people that used to work with him at the Breakfast Club or were interns or just came by. And, like, that's a real, real fucking leader. Yeah. And I... And I um I just love seeing that shit. And he really has inspired me. When when <clears throat> when people tell me I'm a good boss, it's crazy because I really do think one, I've learned from bad bosses, but two, I've learned from Charlemagne. Like he told me once, um, I watched Brianda talk about me on this interview, and I don't really feel like I did anything for Brianda, but she feels like I did, right? And he was like saying to me, like, you know, the way that you feel about me. And what I've done for you, you need to make more Wheezy's, build people up. That's a legacy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make more of you and build people to the point where they couldn't have been without you. And it's funny because sometimes you would think that maybe, what is just horrible decision? Does it have reach? But I think of someone like Dash, the rope dude, and hearing him talk about how horrible decisions got him so many clients, or Mistress Marley using yeah. our name as featured on, and it's a real thing. There's so a marvelous, like the way we we've, we've catapulted. I mean, people in their space, in, sex space. in in this sex space. I think it's also very telling to still um, going up to people and and hearing how we've transformed their relationships. Um, I actually did when I went out to Vegas. Um, hung with the the dancer. Um, hold on, I want to get her name. Because Candace, it, no, Yo, Yoey, hold on. Her name, oh, I'm being dancer on the wrong from page. what? She dances currently for Usher, for his residency. Oh, the girl that wrote us. That so her name is Yoey, and what was amazing about my interaction with her was I got to meet her partner. 
I want to say fiance, they're about to get married or maybe they are married already. And her partner pulled me aside and was like, I just want you to know I hear your voice all the time and you really make her happy. Aww. You've a, like, you're someone who's impacted her. She listens to you. And can I just say thank you for doing that for her? Like literally her, her girl pulled me aside and said that. So I don't think we realized either like, our impact not only on the sex workers that we bring on the pod, the other podcasters we brought on. Um, and it's kind of a full circle moment. And in talking about full circle moment, again, even bringing up you being a boss, I wanted to ask you, I wanted to start, we have four shifts, um, and I'm going to try to make it to home mail, but we have four shifts that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to know in a career shift, um, is there anything now, is there anything that you do now that is similar to your job in tech? And I'll answer to the same in accounting. Oh, man. I'm a seller to the core, bro. Like, okay. So with WTF now, we're seasoned enough. It's coming two years where, like, I used to do tours on my own and stuff like that. But um, Alex gave me a compliment recently. We were on the phone with this big company. And I'm not going to lie. I didn't know a lot of the things they were asking me. Um, they want to basically do this contract for a year where this podcast is strictly out of our studio. And he started talking about stuff. Um, and he was like, now would your team handle that development and show running? I was like, as I said, we're production studio, right? Like post and pr uh, post production mainly, but we'll hire on your pre-production team and absolutely bring candidates for you to interview. So when we hung up, Alex was like, who are they going to interview? I was like, I don't know, nigga. I'm about to figure it out. The fuck? <laughs> they just said they want a showrunner. I'm not going to let them leave and start hitting up other people for a showrunner. I'm going to use my connects, find a bunch of black showrunners, and then have them interview right. with these people. And I, I sell a lot when it comes to, um, you know, to writers or pitching shows or having them work with Calabo, which is Kenya's company. And I don't think any of that would be something I could do today if I wasn't selling fucking tech shit. I mean, for those of you <clears throat> who are new listeners, I would sell um, like disaster recovery software. So if a company, you can even say full court studios, right? Hey, you guys have a lot of podcasts come in here and you have a bunch of audio files. What happens if your computer crashes? We have a cloud recovery software that da 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 shit like that. And I would sell the fuck out of them. I was walking in a barbershop selling that shit, nigga. Like, okay. you know, and, and it's it's a very humbling thing. Like, I've never been a waitress, which I feel like everyone needs under their belt to, like, understand how to work with people. But I have, I I have worked in the mall. And I think, like, knowing those jobs that are kind of from the bottom up really do help you and shape you to be a good person when yeah. having employees. I, I realize now with, with my team, um, my need for organization, structure, Excel sheets, making everything um, just easy. Like, I realize how much I enjoy processes. I, I realize how much I enjoy, hey, let me create a system that works and let me implement it into different things. So exactly how I formatted and set up, like, horrible on the back end, I brought that over to see the thing is, and now I'm working on creating a manual to bringing it to more shows and networks and production houses. And I think that, you know, where it's not fun. Excel sheets aren't fun for everybody and processes and management and, you know, DIT and none of that is fun, but like knowing how to label files and all of those things. I found like a lot of excitement in that where I was at one point like, bitch, I don't want to manage. You know, I, I gotta say, I was thinking of something the other day um, that <clears throat> really made me feel proud because I was talking to someone in LA who said, Yo, that's wild. Your co-host has a podcast studio. Like, and I was like, yeah, I feel you. I was like, but, you know, I got to be real with you. Like, I don't really have a co-host that's not doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of podcasts out here that have one person that's doing really well and excelling and the other is just kind of floating. And You think so? Absolutely. And a lot of duo pods? Yep. I think there's a lot of podcasts where either they're... They're just, just doing their podcast, so they haven't grown. And I was like, you know, like, <clears throat> there's not really... I said, if if I would see something come up where she was... Uh, maybe, maybe she got another TV show or she's doing a movie, like, it wouldn't be a shocker to me. I don't think okay. it would be for her either, right? If you saw me doing something like that. I was like, these are just kind of the wins I'm used to getting with a co-host on Horrible Decisions like that. Like, I'm getting a bag, she's getting a bag. And I don't know many podcasts where their partner is also doing something outside of them, you know? Okay. And I, for a while with Horrible, 
we were doing that. And I think you and I both felt that probably like right in the middle, like year three, like, okay, I need to have something for myself. And I think it was a point where I remember we were doing therapy a lot. It's like, am I breaking away or am I just learning my own self? And there's a real thing of like needing to come into your own because sometimes it is annoying for someone to look at me and be like, oh, Mandy. And it's annoying because I'm like, I wish I did something else that people could know me for. Right. You know, I, I would love my own identity, even though horrible decision is the biggest thing I do. Still, it's nice to know that like there are other things coming back to point A. I had a, con a comment recently, which to me isn't, isn't a common comment, but someone said, oh my God, I'm so happy I watched Sex Cells because I found horrible decisions. And I was like, oh, this is it. Like there is a reason that I'm connecting other dots because it only makes the other shit bigger and it only gets more money on both ends, right? right. If you're not growing and going out there and doing things, what if I was the only one? What if you were the only one? You're like, damn, bitch. Well, where the fuck, what are you doing to fucking get money in the show? Because for a while when we started the show, I remember you used to say, like, I brought listeners because I had X, Y, Z. And it would make me feel like shit because I'm like, nigga, I'm also talent. Like, people are staying because I'm here, right? And it made me feel like maybe Mandy feels like I'm nothing. But I know that there's no way in hell that could happen today because we both are really out here working. We have not just let horrible decisions be the only thing. And I think that is the biggest thing that I've taken away from our show that um, maybe other podcasters haven't reached yet. Maybe, uh, maybe other people in duos or partnerships or YouTube creators haven't been able to figure out yet. Learning how to actually branch. Right. That's a real, real skill. Right. Uh, Y'all know I want to bring it back to sex. Um, Girl, you ain't got to do that. Say, kink, agree. Kink, kink shifts. You do that a lot. But You'd be like, right, okay. <laughs> but we both went back and forth. I'll let you finish your thought. Didn't cut you off. And now let's move on the conversation. Um, kink shifts. What were you completely against in the beginning of this podcast P. that you now partake in? Not P. You out here, you just said P. So you out here giving golden showers? No. No? What did I do? I mean, I know for me it was, it was, it was. Feet. I can't think of something. Can you? I, I just sucked a toe the other Can night. you think of anything I've ever said that I'd never do? <laughs> You're a hoe. <laughs> You've been a hoe since day one. Sex clubs I've never really been into. I kind of You went to sex clubs before I did with white people where you no, had to No, no, I'm saying having sex in them. Like, I've never really. Oh, okay. I've never really. I still can't do it. Okay, I like public sex. You like public sex in alleys on the street out in public where you Why do you always because say you that? Said, you brought that up in fucking alley. I sucked we one dick in an alley one... and this boat drove it's by. It's not an alley us. if it's Italian. Yes, it is. so it's a street? I don't know how you say it. It's an ally. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Bitch, y'all know I don't know accents. All right. Um, relationship shifts. Street in Italian. Which ex do you wish you never entertained that you brought up on the pod? And which ex did you learn Strava. the most from? Who did I learn the most from? I learned. Who did you learn the most from and who do you wish you never entertained? I wish I never met Obey. Well, damn, you hate that nigga. Um, All right. I think that he caught, he wasted a lot of my good years. Ooh, that's a whole nother conversation to have on another pod. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, we'll I, talk, fucking him was great. We'll talk about that on another pod. Um, yeah, he he wasted my time. Um, also, you don't I, think I, you I, took anything positive from that relationship? Sure. I learned partnership. I, le I learned a lot about myself. I learned I'll be a great wife. Okay. Um, I learned that. But did you know that before that relationship? He ruined my idea of threesomes, bro. No, I didn't know how good I'd be. Okay. You know what I mean? So he, I feel like there's positive things you took from it that maybe you wouldn't have... Known at 31, 32. It wasn't worth it not been for him. wasting three and a half years. Okay. Um, but also, that's a lot to blame on me. I should have left that nigga a while ago. But the person I most learned the most from, Hospital Dick is probably the only guy in my life that loved me so much that I... You didn't I, know how to receive it. Yeah. Okay. I also think that I let money and success get in the way of that. Mm, I think yeah you did I think you didn't want to let everybody know he was broke I don't know if he was broke he could take care of things he had his own career like it, okay but it was more like he wasn't at the level that other men I was entertaining right were. right and I think I would have been happier with him than Obe mm. like I wouldn't because you met Obe like almost right after I would have saved so much fucking money in therapy and like all kinds of shit but also, I think it was just the universe's way of seeing, saying, like, oh, here, you picked that because it right. was shiny, and look what you gave up. I don't know if I'll ever have a man love me like that again. I hope I do. Right. But I think that he taught me the most about love. Um, For me, I wish 
I never entertained or spent as much time as I did with Lawyer Bay. Um, because How much time was that? It, he didn't it was, feel like he well, was alive. He was, he was like my first year of college. He was at least that year. And then he was someone I just kept going back Do to. Do I know what he looks like? Where is no. that nigga today? I don't know, but the last time we met each other, and I think I brought up on here, like, he was battling depression, alcoholism. He, like, just wasn't a happy person. And so he was in a place where he couldn't be happy for me, and it was just a lot of energy I was exerting on wanting to be there for him. And so, but I also think he was the person that, when I got into school to be an accountant, he was in his last year of school to be a lawyer. So I think I looked too much on what we looked like on paper. That, which is why I kept going back to him. So Lawyer Bay was someone that I wish I kind of didn't entertain. Um, and of course, the person that I learned the most from was my ex, my most recent, my first relationship. Um, he he showed me that I know I could be a good wife. I could be a good partner. I could listen. I could be submissive, which I didn't think I had the capability of. I don't believe of. it. <laughs> oh, neither did Crystal. Neither did any of my friends until they saw me with him. Like I can see even, you being soft. No, they've even said in what way they've even submissive? said like, bitch, he don't know how good he got it because all the shit you give him, they'd be like, bitch, if I was as busy as you, there's no way I would give do all the things that you do for this man. And I don't think he saw it. He also d doesn't know he met me in a pandemic. So I was like, I used to tell him, I said, but you don't even know how nasty and mean a bitch is because bitch, I'm. I don't give a fuck about these niggas. Do you think there's mean. anything when the quote unquote world opened that you stopped doing? Did he ever tell you you stopped no, doing No, I something? didn't stop doing anything. I just got busier. And one of the things that was really That's good. odd, but what one of the things that like made me feel a way is that he he used me being tired and exhausted as a way to put me down. Like for a, for a while I stopped what do cooking. You mean? Like for a while I stopped cooking, but I would still order the food. If you wanted a meal, instead of making you take me out, I would order the food. I always fed you. Always fed you, always fucked you. And <laughs> period. <laughs> you getting fed and you getting fucked, nigga. Not financed, but. but... No, not financed, um, but fed and fucked. And it started being to where like, oh, you're too tired or you're too exhausted. Or he hated that I would even say how exhausted I was. And it was just like, nigga, I work. Nigga, I own businesses. Nigga, I, I manage teams. And so he started making me almost feel bad that I was a boss. And what, what hurt me about that was, it's one of my most prideful things. Like, Jay, and I, I hate that I always shout this bitch out. Jay takes on the pride of everything that I do in the studio and see the thing is, and anything that I wanna do as a talent, like it's her. And so like, to even have people that wanna work hard and want me to grow means something to me. So when the one person that I love makes me feel like I'm working too hard. No, I and, agree. Like, it, it made me feel like, how are you making me feel bad about one of the things that I'm most proud of? That was actually the craziest thing about Hospital Dick. He ha seemingly had an issue with sex. Mind you, this is how he knew me, right? Okay. He's a brilliant listener. Okay. But he told me once when I was creating Sex Cells, and I was like, yo, I'm not going to interview people about their sex lives, just money. And he was like, yeah, but, you know, we wanted to have kids. And he was like, but, like, how quick is this going to be done? Because my contract was saying certain things. And he was like, well, how soon are you going to be finished? Like, because you can't be doing this pregnant. And I'm like, why not? what? You like, think I don't want to go to a dungeon holding my back, sitting down, like, woo, tell me about cream pies, because I know. <laughs> like, I do think that sometimes men may look at it as something amazing until it inconveniences them. Right. And the inconvenience in your case. And that's the thing. Maybe I could go one round tonight, but not eight. But you know what they also don't understand? I'm tired today because this is me today, nigga. Because at the same time in five years from now, for example, how much work were we doing with Horrible Decisions? Bro, that Patreon merch was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I remember I used to ship it myself. Like, I used to put the t-shirts in the bag, write the fucking names on the labels. I used to do that shit before we got Teespring. I used to house the shit. You used to house the shit. I used to go to storage, mail it. Like, that is now offloaded. Because why? We're making more money. Nigga, I'm going to have less fucking shit to fucking do hands-on when I have more money. So, right. like, let me build these blocks. And I don't think that men really get it. But also, 
the considerate watching like, women be, do being it they get it for themselves but being considerate in the fact that i'm still cooking for you i'm making sure there's time i'm moving around my schedule so that we can have a day at the park or a day at the spa or this and so to feel like you mad or disappointed or disconnected with me because i'm tired i got work fucking hard and so to me that was that was the I biggest know you thing. ain't tired enough. That was the biggest to, thing about to me. not fuck. I last know that. thing, last thing before we get out of here is sex shifts. Only because we've talked about being LGBTQ, we've talked about being ethically non-monogamous. What have you learned most about your sexuality through the horrible decisions journey? I was an emo hoe day one, and I still am. That hasn't changed. Um, but you said something about you have a new uh, thought process for threesomes now. I, uh, you're saying I said this today? You just said this about what you, what you learned about it, oh, through oh, your relationship. Oh, how you said he ruined Obey. threesomes for right. me. Right. Like, but you really like threesomes. You really like engaging did, you know, with women. I loved threesomes. What, and so what changed about that? Because that's still a part to me of sexuality. I learned that maybe I was so excited to have a, a sexually good partner that it made me want to fuck other people with them. And what Ooh, I, same. what I learned with. I love sharing a good dick. Right? Oh. This is we're good people. Oh, scissors for the world taught me that I was so strong with her, so in love with her. I definitely had threesomes with Obey before I was in love with him, right? I don't know if I'll ever again have threesomes with someone, and I can't say never say never. I don't know if I will, but before that foundation is super solid, because with Obey, I th I didn't understand that we'd be together. Right. I was like, oh, let's just fuck these hoes, and then we ended up together. With scissors, we had a seriously deep connection to where the threesomes meant something better. Also, like the threesomes I had with Old Bay were with fans and random bitches. And I do you, you stay fucking fans. I mean, like, are you gonna keep fucking fans? No, like we almost had sex with one of my homegirls at the time. That didn't happen. But like, even then, like I was close to her at the time, close to him. So that didn't feel right. weird. But like, or or hanging out with them didn't feel weird. But um, that's the only time I think really something felt safe. I think that that's, in terms of safeness, I think where I I questioned what I needed for so long, sex clubs, allowing, allowing me to be with women, not only with you, but separately. I realized how much I really like, and y'all heard it last week on our, on our episode with LES podcast, but it is to me important that whoever I'm with is okay with the non-monogamy of sex clubs, the non-monogamy aspect of me bringing women in, but also allowing me to be with other women. And if that then translates to you having to be with other women, we need to have a conversation about it because I've realized I don't want to be open. I don't want you to be emotionally connected to somebody. But I think in the beginning phase of this podcast, I didn't know what I wanted as far as a relationship and where I brought up doppelganger in the beginning. What I had sexually and intimately with my ex is exactly what I would still want again. More communication, of course. That or better. That or better. To where he accepts that I accept him. And I've said, I think that that was our biggest thing. I think he had to live a life of lies with the other women he dealt with, which is maybe why he cheated, maybe which is why he stepped out, which is, which is maybe why he ventured on these rabbit holes of escapades with random women. And we've talked about that, but... I don't think he fully accepted that I accepted him for who he was. And so to me, I want someone to be open with, what do you want? Nigga, if you bisexual, what's up? What do you need to where you're fulfilled, I'm fulfilled, but we're open with each other? I need that. And I think that I don't get there without this podcast. I don't get there without us coming on, talking about our relationships, naming all these niggas what they are, being vulnerable, talking about our highs and our lows with men and women. I don't think I get there. And now I know exactly what I had in that space is what I want again. And that's why I can't date no celebrity. Because them niggas ain't trying to go to a sex club. Unless they wear a fucking mask. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Um, we're going to get well, out we of here. we were technically the yes. whole mail this week. so We were the whole mail. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, before we get out of here and let y'all know about our Patreon, we'll let y'all know what else we got going on. Make sure y'all tune in every Thursday at Congrats. 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern on MTV. It's the MTV digital platform on their YouTube channel, MTV's Date My Playlist. I'm your host. Make sure you tune in every Tuesday and Friday to my other podcast, 
see the thing is um and i'm not sure when it's going to be posted um but i hosted and moderated a wonderful panel at revolt summit um the pitch competition which is like fucking shark tank so i was like oh my god not me kind of hosting shark tank but it was a wonderful uh it was a wonderful panel where we had judges on there um give ten thousand dollars away to a bipoc tech startup um shout out to con connect i believe is who won um but that'll be coming on the revolt channel soon so just thank revolt uh for having me mtv and again make sure you guys check out my other podcast oh and we're at full core studios so if you're in Brooklyn, in New York, and want to film, uh, come to Full Course Studios. Check out fullcoursestudio.com. And that's a wrap. Check us out on Patreon if you want some more up-to-date tea. Our show is produced almost like a TV show. We film it. We get ready. We pick our guests ahead of time. So if you want that on-the-fly, up-to-date, what the fuck yep. happened last night, tea journey, that part. patreon.com backslash. And we got decisions. BTS on there, too. So y'all get to see us like behind the scenes. That's right. And then once a month, uh, which is amazing, um, if you're one of our top tier, our, one of our top two tiers, um, we get on a town hall in Zoom chat with our patrons. So guys, this has been yet another episode. We're leaving you with a five minute bonus clip. Another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye. Till next week. Peace. Bye.